Good morning, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for your patience as we get everything going today. It takes a couple minutes to make all of our connections, so bear with us just a moment. Okay, thanks for joining us today as we gather for worship. Sarah's going to get us started with our prelude music this morning. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. The first piece I'll be playing today is Cleanse Me Medley, arranged by Elmo Mercer. The next song I'll be playing this morning is For the Beauty of the Earth, arranged by Teresa Wilhelm.
The next song I'll be playing is What Wondrous Love Is This, arranged by Stephen Nielsen. The next piece I will be playing is The Power of the Cross, arranged by James Kurtz.
the last piece I'll be playing this morning is the Sweet By and By, arranged by Mark Hayes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our worship service this Lord's Day at the Kirk of Kansas City. I'm Chad Herring. I'm the pastor of the Kirk. We are a Christian community seeking to follow God on the way of Jesus Christ and a part of the Presbyterian Church USA. The Kirk seeks to build community and to love and serve our neighbors. We aspire to be guided by an inclusive theology, a welcoming spirit, and a commitment to seeking after peace and justice in the world. This time together is one way that we seek to be connected to God. Worship helps ground our lives in something bigger than ourselves. It helps cultivate goodness and grace and generosity in our lives so that we can be a part of God's good work to pursue healing and justice and peace in the world. If you've been worshiping with us, all of this is familiar to you by now. But if this is your first time, don't worry. Uh, I'll walk you through it as we go. We're using Zoom as our worship platform today. 
We're also simulcasting on Facebook Live. Facebook allows you to check back anytime later to watch us again, or you can share it with someone that you know who might be interested. And we're going to post the video of today's service on our website by Monday. So you have several options about how you can worship with us if you can't catch us live every week. We are intentional about our worship service being a live service, even if some days we have parts of it pre-recorded. Uh, because this is a live service, you are participating, right, in something that is happening in real time, and there might be bumps and hiccups along the way. But, but this isn't a performance or a TV show that you simply observe and take in. Uh, worship is meant to engage you, to inspire you, to think and reflect through prayer and song and maybe even some silence. One way that you can help with our service if you are joining us live is by using the chat feature. Say hello to the others who are watching on Facebook or on Zoom. And, and please also use the chat feature to share prayer requests with us. A bit later in the service, we're gonna gather all of your uh, prayer requests up and we'll lift them up during our com uh, community prayer. Um, if you're on Zoom, please note that Zoom gives you the choice where to send your chat. You can either send it just to the worship team, Zoom calls those panelists, or to everyone who's watching on Zoom, that's panelists and attendees. Whether you're watching live or catching up a little bit later, we invite you to check in on one another throughout the week. We remember that faithful community is what all of this is about. Our engagement is what makes this faithful time well spent. You can learn more about our church at our website, kckirk.org. On our Facebook page, look for the Kirk of KC, and we're on Twitter and Instagram as well. Please like and follow these social media accounts we use them to share announcements about various activities throughout the week. You can also contact the church if you'd like to be placed on our email list. That's another way that we send out uh, invitations and pertinent information. If you have pastoral concerns and want to get a hold of me, there's my contact information on the screen. I'm at chad at kckirk.org. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Our youth group has resumed weekly gatherings. They're meeting outside at the Kirk on Sunday nights from 6.30 to 7.30. This is open for all youth in middle school and high school. They're not meeting tonight due to the holiday weekend, but otherwise every Sunday this month after church, they plan to get together. Contact Mitch for more information. Her email is mitch, M-I-C-H, at kckirk.org. We're gonna celebrate communion today, which means we need your help. If you haven't done so already, grab your bread or your crackers, and your own juice of the grape and have those with you for when we have communion. Communion is going to be after the sermon, so you have a little time to go get it from your pantry. If you don't have exactly the bread or the juice that you want, that's okay, just do your best. We'll be asking you to join us and as we all break the bread together and drink our juice at the right time, so you'll need those handy uh, after the sermon. One of the reasons we celebrate the Lord's Supper, one of its inherent meanings, is that we are all welcome into community together. And God provides for us and nourishes us and forms us into a church, into God's very own people through the gift of the bread broken and the cup outpoured. This is a challenge for us when we're worshiping virtually. To help symbolize the larger church that's gathering here today, many of our deacons and our ruling elders from our leadership team, the leadership team that we call the session, will join us on screen for communion today. So when you join us for communion, you'll see many other people uh, join you in this sacrament, all of us nourished and fed by our Lord Jesus Christ. One last announcement. Uh, you're invited to join us for a virtual coffee hour right after worship today. That's a separate Zoom meeting and the login information was included in the weekly email that's sent out on Friday that reminds everyone about this worship service. If you'd like to join us for coffee hour uh, and you need the login information, contact the worship team via chat and we'll try to help get you connected. Now that we're done with these announcements, we can get started. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's worship God together. We're going to begin with some prayer to center us, to connect us with one another. First, a call to worship, and then a prayer of confession, reflection, and renewal. My daughters, Nora and Tessa, are here. Hello, ladies. They're going to help lead our gathering prayer this morning. Say hello, ladies. Hi. Hi, guys. And we invite you to join us as we begin with the call to worship today. Oh, Lord. Oh, sorry. Oh, Lord, to join together each week and to place our lives in your hands. This is a great blessing. To give you our burdens and to trust in your love. This is a sweet refreshment. To free our spirits and let them soar as you intend. This is deep joy. Oh, Lord, we gather today to do these things and to worship you for making them possible. Thank you for gathering us in today and every day. Amen. 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 Thank you, ladies. Thanks yeah. for helping us this morning. Mitch Phillips is our liturgist today. She's going to greet us and will lead us all in our prayer of confession, reflection, and renewal. Good morning, Mitch. 
Good morning. What a beautiful day it is to celebrate the Lord's Day and get to celebrate the body of Christ with everyone joining us. So I am so honored to be here and let us gather together in our prayer of confession, renewal, and re reflection in renewal. Let us pray. God of life, grant us your forgiveness. We have been heedless in our thoughts, cruel in our words, shameful in our actions. We are indifferent to a world made sad by want and wastefulness. We pass by on the other side when we see our neighbor in need. We wander from the way that leads to peace on paths of our own pleasing. By contrast, your mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. Help mold our lives more closely to your way that we might magnify you and magnify your way with the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our righteousness is found in Christ alone, a gift of God by faith. We seek God's way because it is just. We are convinced that when we seek God's way, there is forgiveness when we fall short. Beloved people of God, believe the good news of the gospel. In Christ, we are all forgiven. Amen. Next, we turn to the special music portion of our service. I love how during our summer months, our Kirk family sometimes pitch in and offer a special music selection for us all to enjoy. And today is one of those Sundays. We're delighted to welcome Jason, Grant, and Savannah Holzman who are going to sing, Let Me Ride in Your Big Cadillac. Here's our special music for the morning. Let me ride in your big Cadillac, Lord Jesus, let me ride.
Every week, we turn to these ancient stories of Holy Scripture, and we ask ourselves how they intersect with our lives in this world uh, this very day. Today, our first reading comes from the Apostle Paul and his letter to the church in Rome. It's Romans 1, 1 to 7, and 14 through 17. Because Landon is our guest preacher today, I'll be reading the first scripture passage for us this morning. Let's all listen for God's movement in this reading from God's holy word. Paul, a servant of Jesus Christ called to be an apostle set apart for the gospel of God, which God promised beforehand through God's prophets in the holy scriptures. The gospel concerning God's son, who was descended from David according to the flesh, and was declared to be son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness, by resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom we have received grace and apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith among all the Gentiles for the sake of his name, including yourselves, who are called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all God's beloved in Rome, who are called to be saints, grace to you, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I am a debtor, both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to the wise and to the foolish. Hence my eagerness to proclaim the gospel to you also who are in Rome. For I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is the power of God for salvation to everyone who has faith, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For in it, the righteousness of God is revealed through faith for faith. As it is written, the one who is righteous will live by faith. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading and our sermon is presented this morning by our parish associate, Landon Whitson. Here's Landon. Good morning, Kirk family. I am thrilled to be able to preach just for you today. Um, Synod sermons have been great, but I got to tell you, I have missed you all. I have missed seeing your faces. I have missed hearing your voices as we sing. I have missed greeting you after worship, and I have missed being with you for communion services. I look forward to the day when we can gather together again safely and in person. Our second text today comes to us from the book of Exodus in the 12th chapter, and it's a continuation of our series, I Feel Seen ancient stories, and modern wisdom. In this series, as you know, we've been giving our attention to the narratives of Genesis and Exodus and asking what God might be using in those long ago places to help us navigate this time and in this place. It's a pretty powerful thing, isn't it, to realize that the events of thousands of years ago uh, can have relevance of our lives today. Um, I have to trust that like me, When you have heard the stories of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, of Joseph and of Moses, you come away from those encounters with an abiding sense, maybe a comforting sense, that God has been working with the people on the same stuff for as long as there have been people. I don't know about you, that makes me feel better about my life. I'm not the first person to have been dealing with this stuff. And that makes me feel understood. That makes me feel seen. So let's turn our attention to this week's reading, a continuation of the Exodus story. Would you join me in prayer? Holy God, in whom we live and move and have our being, we are not separate from you nor from one another, even though we may act like it. So in your forgiving grace, please prick our hearts and illumine our minds that we might hear a word from you this day. Amen. And the Lord said to Moses and to Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the 10th of this month, they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, then it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. And the lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat it. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month, and then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at twilight. They shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. 
They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Don't eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning, you shall burn. And this is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand. And you shall eat it hurriedly. It is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals. On all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. No plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. And may God bless our reading and our hearing and our applying of these words to how we live our lives. Amen. I am not a sentimental type. While I am prone to tears, and <laughs> you all at the Kirk know that, while I'm prone to tears and emotions, I am actually not sentimental. I do not like looking back. I like looking forward. And I do just about anything I can to make sure that the things of the past, be they traditions or expectations or just even good old memories, don't hinder me as I'm making my way down the road of life. I, I chafe at proclamations like, well, this is just what we do, or this is who we are. And while I like daily and weekly routines and expectations, I treat almost every regular event as if it was negotiable. But there are two traditions in my life that I hold tight to. There are, and you will not pry them from my hands nor from my heart. One of these traditions is our annual Friendsgiving dinner on the day before Thanksgiving, where we gather with those people that we call our chosen family, and we celebrate who it is that we have been to one another. I got to tell you, I will move mountains. I will move mountains to be in the Herring Bailey kitchen on that day conspiring with Brooke about the best way to get the bird to the table and make sure that the gravy and all the trimmings are top notch. It is not hyperbole for me to say this is the most important day of the year for me. The other tradition that I hold to begins not long after our Friendsgiving tradition, and it's interesting to note to me that that day, this event starts exactly three months from today. December 6th is the feast day of of St. Nicholas. That's right, Santa Claus. It is a special tradition in our family to rise with the sun on December 6th and hold our feast. Some years, uh, it has been a full menu with fruit dipped in chocolate, nuts, cinnamon rolls, a breakfast casserole, homemade St. Nicholas cookies, you know, the full, the full nine. Uh, on other years, it's just been a normal and, and simple breakfast meal, but there are things that remain the same every year. Every year we tell the story of St. Nicholas, about how he was a bishop of the church who gave anonymously to the poor and helped out those in enslavement. We tell these stories and we implore our boys to remember that we are called to do the same kinds of things and that service to others, service to others is truly the spirit of Christmas. And then we encourage our kids to look for ways to do good deeds in secret. Like when they were younger, like make your brother's bed and then leave a note that says from St. Nicholas, right? There are numerous times during this period from December 6th leading up to Christmas where I or Gerilyn one will do one another's household chores that day or that week. And we'll say to each other, let St. Nicholas take care of that for you. And the point of this whole exercise for us is to embody St. Nicholas in the hopes that by doing those things, we come to really understand who this man is and what made him so special. In a very real way for us, by pretending to be St. Nick, we think we become St. Nick. 
In today's scripture in Exodus, um, the scripture that we have today is essentially, actually, a very similar kind of thing. What God is instructing the people to do is to take time every year to recreate the flight from Egypt. Every year, they are to hold a Passover feast. And, and here's what I love about it. I love that God did not say, um, hey, y'all, um, I'd like you to bring up the escape from Egypt as a discussion item uh, every year around this time, okay? <laughs> no, that's not what God's into. God is not into a silly little thing like that. For God, this is God making a play, as we used to say when I was in school. God has stage directions, God has costumes, and God has a list of cast members that you are supposed to include. You're supposed to gather together with just your family or or with one other family if your family is, is small. God doesn't want the point of this exercise, I don't think, to get lost in the midst of a big all-church worship service. This happens at home. This happens in intimate Spaces where nobody is left out. Everybody takes part. It said we are to divide the proportion of the lamb relative to how many people there are. Everybody takes part. There's a specific list of food that you're to have on the table. Clothes that you're to wear. You're to eat dinner fast. This is not occasion. This is not an occasion for lingering and talking and having another glass of wine or, or just one more bite of dessert. No, this is a commemoration of a time when the people were at fear for their lives and they had to be ready to go at a moment's notice because the tyrannical ruler of the country might just reverse his decision to let them go on a whim and slaughter them all. So God never wants the people to forget this night, ever. God wants them to remember this night, this moment, this event for the rest of of their lives and for the rest of time. And what I find so fascinating about this section of Exodus is that God gives them this ritual even before the event has occurred. Did you catch that? God says to them, I'm about to set you free. So next year, after I've set you free, I want you to recreate the events in detail of me setting you free this year. I mean, this is like Babe Ruth calling the home run before the pitch, right? Or, or, or this is the chess master telling her opponent exactly how many moves it's going to be before she puts them in, in checkmate. It, it must have been an, an awe-inspiring and an awesome thing to be walking out of Egypt knowing that it was taking place exactly the way God said it would. It's the kind of experience that should make trusting God just a little bit easier the next time, right? And even easier the time after that. The Apostle Paul alludes to this kind of dynamic this week in our, in our reading from Romans when he says, the righteousness of God is revealed through faith for faith. When we see God at work, we have to remember and remind ourselves of that work so that we can more easily trust God the next time trust is required. The righteousness of God is revealed through faith for faith. When we trust, we are able to trust more the next time. And if I'm being honest with you, this is one of the main reasons that we do worship services, truly. It's fun to see our friends, absolutely. It is fun to band together and see people and love people and care for people. But one of the main reasons we do worship services is to constantly remind ourselves of the marvelous things that God has done and to take moments to continually give God thanks for those marvelous things. If we don't recreate the experience, we forget, say, what it feels like to admit that we have done wrong. And we forget what it feels like to forgive. And so we do a prayer of confession, reflection, and renewal every single week. We can't forget. Confession and forgiveness is at the heart, is at the core of who we are as people of grace. We can't forget it. It's not good enough for, for Chad, say, or, or myself to stand up in front of you and say, hey, everybody, remember grace, okay? It's not good enough to just say that. Practice makes perfect, and if we don't practice grace, we will never get good at it. 
And the God of the ancient Hebrews understood this, understood something very fundamental in the psyche of human beings. We can think a lot of thoughts, but it's the practices of embodiment that just bring it all home and make it real for us. Here in a bit, we're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper together. It's only the second time we've done so together um, since this pandemic started. And whether or not and how to have communion during this time has caused a lot of pastors and sessions, a lot of heartache and consternation. Our Kirk pastor and our session included. These faithful women and men have, have spent a lot of time thinking about this. And the reason that it's caused a lot of heartache and a lot of consternation, I think, is because we understand something in our bones about what communion means. There's just something inadequate about not being able to do this together, not being able to be together when we do this, right? It feels weird. It does. Communion is a ritual of grace in community. And those of us who lead worship can remind you intellectually and with pretty words that you are loved, that you are forgiven, that you are made whole by being a part of the body of Christ. We can say, hey, everybody remember grace. We can say those things. We can preach these words to you, but there is nothing like having that bread and that fruit of the vine and tasting and seeing that the Lord is good, right? Amen? And so I think if God were talking to us today, while we are still in the midst of this pandemic, what we would hear would be something similar to what the ancient Hebrews were told while they were still in Egypt. I'm going to set you free from this, says the Lord. And when I do, I want you to gather together. And I want you to dress in your finest clothes, the clothes that you have not gotten to wear in public for a year. And I want you to gather inside and very close to one another. And I want you to sing. And I want you to greet one another with the peace of Christ. And I want you to hug. And I want you to gather around tables. And I want you to feast until your hearts and your bellies are full. But until that day, says the Lord, I want you to gather in front of computer screens. And I want you to take a piece of bread. And I want you to take some juice of the vine. And I want you to practice and I don't want you to forget. Don't forget that I've called you into community. Don't forget that there are people who love you. Don't forget that you have been called by me to bring healing and love to the world. Do not forget. Friends, now more than ever, we need rituals of community. This time apart could make us into callous people who think that we don't have to rely on others. Being isolated will only lead to the lie that everyone is in it for themselves. Do you remember the great toilet paper crisis of the spring of 2020? The church is better equipped than any other organization I know to help us remember that we are in this together. And now, more than ever, connection is at the top of the list. It's why we do worship live so that we can somewhat be in connection with one another. And so like the Lord told the Hebrew slaves, gather together with your family and remember what I did for you. Maybe gather together with one other family, the text says. It sounds kind of like coronavirus instructions, doesn't it? But even just as families gather together and do this thing so that you don't forget. So friends, may we be the people who don't forget. May we be the people who remember the future by what we do today. Amen. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thanks be to God. Every week we offer a hymn as a way for us all to reflect on our theme for the day. Today's hymn, God of Compassion and Mercy Befriend Us, is led by our choir section leaders. You can either sit back and just enjoy, or if you'd like, you can sing along at home with the words that are printed on the screen. Here's our hymn of the day.
Now let's come together to celebrate the gift of the Lord's Supper. Ordinarily, we would be gathered together, right, around a table, which helps us recall the night just before Jesus's arrest when he was sitting with his friends and sharing a meal. While we cannot be together in one place, we are together through the wonders of technology, even as we recognize its limits and look forward to the day when we can celebrate this sacrament again in person. So gather your elements, your bread and your cup, right? And um, join me as we together affirm the welcome that Christ extends to all. Dear friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. People come from all over the world, north and south and east and west, to gather at the table of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All are welcome here. Come, because Christ invites you to come. Come, because there is a place for you at God's table. According to Luke, when our risen Lord was at table with his disciples, he took bread and he blessed and he broke it and he gave it to them and their eyes were open and they recognized him. So too for us, Christ is here. May our eyes be open to the presence of our living Lord. Amen. Please join me in a prayer of thanksgiving. Holy God, we praise you. Let the heavens be joyful and the earth be glad. We praise you for creating the whole world, for your promises to your people Israel and for Jesus Christ, in whom your fullness dwells. Born of Mary, Jesus shares our life. Eating with sinners, he welcomes us. Guiding his children, he leads us. Visiting the sick, he heals us. Dying on the cross, Jesus saves. Risen from the dead, Christ gives new life. Living with you, he prays for us. With thanksgiving, we take this bread and this cup and proclaim the death and resurrection of our Lord. Receive our sacrifice of praise. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us that this meal may be a communion in the body and blood of our Lord. Make us one with Christ and with all who share this feast. Unite us in faith, encourage us with hope, inspire us to love, that we may serve as your faithful disciples until we feast at your table in glory. We praise you, eternal God, through Christ, your word made flesh in the holy and life-giving spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. So give me just a moment, and I think that I can do this and do this, and I think all of us are now on the screen. It's amazing how technology allows us to do that. Um, dear friends, I invite you now to take your bread, your loaf of bread, like this loaf of bread that I have here, and we remember how on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he was with his friends and he took a loaf of bread from the table and he gave thanks to God for it and he broke it. Everybody break your bread. And he gave it to them saying, this, this bread is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat. Do this in remembrance of me. All of you can take a little bread and eat of it. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took a cup from the table and he gave thanks to God for it. And he gave it to them, saying, this cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you, for the forgiveness of sins. All of you drink of it. And when you do, do this in remembrance of me. You can all drink your cup. <laughs> it's a sign of a life service. When a pastor gets so excited about communion that he uh, he really drinks the cup. Okay, let's pray together, shall we? You good? Gracious yeah. God, we gracious God, I'm okay. Thanks, Mitch. <laughs> gracious God, we thank you for this meal shared in the Spirit with Christ, who makes us new and strong, who gives us life abundant and life eternal. We pledge ourselves to serve you, even as Christ has served us, and we make this prayer in Christ's holy name. 
Amen. Amen. And now I think I can turn the view back to just me. <laughs> Goodness. Dear friends, our worship service always includes a moment of thanksgiving. This is our opportunity to make note of God's many gifts in our lives and where we pledge ourselves to recognize God's many gifts and to use them as God invites us to use them, namely to help make this world a better place for others, to reinvest them in other people and for the common good. When we celebrate communion, we note that we've already offered a prayer of thanksgiving to God. So we'll move on to our community prayer. But before we do so, we thank you for doing your part to respond to God's grace through acts of love for your neighbor. We're grateful for all you do in your own communities and through this church to share God's love and God's compassion. If you are looking for a place to do that, we'd love to have you join us here at the Kirk. Now, <laughs> thank you. Um, now we're going to go to our time for community prayer. I'm going to lift up some prayer concerns that are specific to our church community. And if you're watching and you don't know them, that's okay. Just send your best thoughts along anyway. If you're online, now is a really good time to send in your prayer requests. Uh, we'll gather those together as well, and we'll lift them up to God. I'll end each one with the words, O oh Lord, hear our prayer. You can say that at home as well. O oh Lord, hear our prayer. We begin our prayers today for our nation and for broken places and hurting communities, particularly for those who are struggling uh, against systemic racism. And because we follow the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and are guided together with the witness of our denomination, we join with other people of faith and everyone of goodwill who seeks an end to racism. We ask that God will guide us on the path of justice and reconciliation and peace, all three part of God's good intention for the world. We ask God to help us claim this anti-racism work as our very own so that we can end racism in our lives and in our country. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for our country as this COVID-19 pandemic uh, appears to be growing worse in certain places. We pray for doctors and nurses and first responders. We pray for caregivers and families who fret over loved ones who are sick with this disease. We lift up others in our own circles of care and concern and together we pray for progress in our community in combating this pandemic. Oh Lord, hear our prayers. We're saddened today to report uh, the passing of two dear friends. On the 28th of August, Eva Kuntz died after a lengthy convalescence at the Forum in Overland Park. I'll be leading her family in a small graveside service of witness to the re resurrection on Tuesday of this week. We lift up Eva to God uh, this morning, as well as offer prayers of condolence and comfort to all who will miss her. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. And on Friday evening, Marcy McMillan passed away after a short time in hospice care this week. I don't have any word yet about whether there'll be a service uh, for Marcy, but we give thanks today for her life, for her many gifts, and we offer prayers for her and for all who will miss her. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. Lori Cadonis' father, Frank Coulter, has been struggling with his health, and this week he entered hospice care. We offer prayers of comfort for Frank and prayers of rest and compassion for Lori and for all of those who are caring for him. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. We lift up Ali Mae Ray today in prayer. Ali Mae Ray is Earl uh, Bragg's, uh, Bragg's aunt. She's been hospitalized in Illinois with some breathing, di breathing difficulty. So we lift her up today in prayer that God's comfort and strength and healing presence will be with her. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. We lift up Jeannie Richardson, who had some health concerns this week. She's home now and doing better. We also pray for Garland uh, as he continues to convalesce uh, from his own health concerns earlier this summer. Prayers today for both Garland and Jean Richardson this morning. Oh, Lord, hear our prayers. And if I can take a moment of personal privilege and ask for prayers for two people I know, uh, we lift up today the, the Reverend Dr. Cecil Corbett. He's a Presbyterian pastor and a colleague of mine who's a leader in the Native American community. He's been hospitalized for the last several weeks with COVID-19, uh, particularly some breathing concerns for him. I lift up prayers for him and for his health. And a friend, Jenny Hatfield Callen, is scheduled to have a surgical procedure later this month. We offer prayers for a successful surgery and for a good recovery. Oh Lord, hear our prayers. We have had other names that we as a community have lifted up regularly over the last several weeks, and we lift them up today as well. Lee Petty, Jim and Kathy Mullen, Wendy Nielsen, Bob Melton, Bill Killam, Martha Moss, Ralph and Eileen Mitchell, Gretchen Cole, Linda Masood, Riley Armstrong, Roger Zerolin, 
uh, Mar Mar Marjorie Langford, Carla Weiss, uh, Jan Bay, Cheryl Huter, Don Daniels, Jill and Vance, Janae Jensen, Tom Edgel, Steve Nolte, Allison Harper, Bill and Larry Neal, Brian Betchler, and the people of the Cameroon. And as we do every Sunday, we pray for the Kirk, that God may continue to find a way to knit us close together, even during this time of physical distancing. Oh, Lord, hear our prayers. Uh, earlier today, we had a few prayer requests in our chat room. Uh, Linda Hannock has asked for prayers for her brother, Jerry Gressum, who also has COVID-19. He's in an assisted living center in Springfield, Missouri. Prayers for Jerry Grissom this morning. Oh, Lord, hear our prayers. Mary Hilton offers uh, ongoing prayers for Jerry. We're glad that this week uh, on the new drug has been better for him, and we look forward to the coming week. Oh, Lord, hear our prayer. Cheryl Kaimig lifts up a prayer request. A cousin of hers is in San Diego and is not only dealing with triple-digit heat, but also has a fire 30 miles from their home. A lot of people in California are concerned about the wildfires this season. We offer prayers for all of those who are in the concern of, in the way for those wildfires in California and Colorado and all in the West. Oh, Lord, hear our prayers. Um, we offer, um, uh, Onita offers prayers for a colleague, Ethel, who's addressing health concerns. Oh, Lord, hear our prayers. John offers prayer for Morgan Thomas, granddaughter at K-State, was diagnosed with, diagnosed with COVID last week. Prayers for her and for her friends and her community. Oh, Lord, hear our prayers. I believe that's all of them. I'm going to see if there are any other prayers in our uh, chat rooms. Okay, with these prayers and the prayers that all of us hold in our hearts, let's turn to God with a spirit of prayer. Please pray with me. God of presence and purpose, we gather today as your faithful people, near and far, amazed and enlivened by your powerful love. Because of your love, we can dream of a new world of peace and possibility. Through your love, we are empowered to gather as your church. Guided by your love, we trust in your ability to help us pursue grace and compassion for our neighbors. We pray today for your world, for all who are hurting or hungry, for those grieving and struggling to make sense of it all. We pray for those directly impacted by injustice and racism in our land. Help us to follow where you lead, to love as you love, to seek the truth as you seek the truth, to stand up for justice and righteousness in our land as we together seek your peace for all people. We pray today for those we know and care about who seek wholeness of body and mind and spirit, who are beset by a host of medical concerns from heart disease to diabetes to cancer to Parkinson. We lift up all who are living with HIV AIDS, for those with dementia and their caregivers, for all who wrestle with mental illness and depression. May your strength be with all of us, we pray. Where healing is possible, we ask for it. And, and in all things, we, we ask that you help us rest our finite bodies in your boundless and infinite love. We continue to pray for leaders in our community who seek to do the right, who shoulder great responsibility. We pray for first responders and medical professionals, for public health workers and therapists. We pray today for insight and patience as together we struggle against COVID-19. We pray for the health and safety and vitality of communities near and far, and particularly those who are dealing with uh, storms and hurricanes and wildfires. We pray for our neighbors and neighborhoods. And again, today we pray for peace, peace in our homes, peace on our city streets, peace in the country, peace around the world. Help us to advance the cause of justice and reconciliation and peace. And as our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ taught us, we pray today for anyone who wishes to do us harm. In your love and in your wisdom, guide us, we pray, O Prince of Peace. We gather today for this chance to ground ourselves, and for that we thank you if uh, only for this um, momentary opportunity to be reminded again of your boundless and infinite love. Continue to give us these moments today and this week as we seek to be your people and to follow you into the future. For these things, we are ever grateful. And we wrap up today this prayer in our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the one who shows us how to love because he is the very love of God. Together, we say his prayer, this prayer in his name, uh, as together we say the prayer that he taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Dear friends, God has claimed us, claimed you and claimed me, 
part of God's community, part of the realm of God. What an amazing and exciting and awesome calling. And so now we look ahead to God's new day with purpose, sharing God's love and God's compassion, God's very own agents in the world. As you look around, you will see others living into this reality. And so too it is for us on this Lord's day. We proclaim Christ is alive. Something new is afoot. God gives us hope, especially during times such as this. And so we take up our work with hope and joy and thanksgiving. Therefore, before we close with our charge and benediction, let me invite you to join us at the Kirk as we find new ways to be God's people together. A reminder that we'll be hosting a virtual coffee hour in just a few minutes, let's say five till 11 or so. Um, and we look forward to seeing you there. In addition, we'll be worshiping online exclusively right now, at least through September, which means we'll be right here again next Sunday morning for worship. And we'd love to have you join us. Now, go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold fast to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord your God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be yours now and forever. Amen. Thanks, everyone, for joining us this Sunday. We'll see you next week. Bye, everyone.